I think everyone has these three zones. Their comfort zone, their learning zone, and their panic zone. And I think our most defining moments and our greatest lessons come when we take risks to move from comfort into learning and maybe to the edge of panic. Now, I'm on this stage because I did not go to grad school. Instead, about five years ago, after working with middle school and high school students, when I was curious about the intersection of for-profit and for-purpose businesses, I was almost going to go to a traditional grad school to get a master's in business. But the costs were too high, and the style didn't fit me. So I decided I would try to design my own education by doing 12 projects in 12 months around the world. I would source these projects by talking to companies in design, business, and social change, and I would try to find one project I could complete over the course of the month. I would fund my year by creating a newsletter that my friends and family could subscribe to at $10 a month, and I would share my learnings with them each month. Now, as I was traveling to fulfill this idea, I had met all kinds of amazing people who started talking to me about the ideas they had to learn in a different kind of way or to create change, to take leaps of their own. So I created an invitation for those people to send stories about the leaps they were taking, the risks they were taking to learn, grow, and create change in their communities. And I promised that if at the end of the year I had enough stories, we would take those stories and make a book. And at the end of the year, sure enough, we created a book called The Leap Year Project of those stories. And this kind of became my dissertation. I also needed a place to graduate, some way to end my year. And there was a TED conference happening in Chicago. So I put a cap and gown on, and that was my graduation. And in 2013, after this was all over, we launched a school, a place where people could come and design their education through experiences in their field of study. Called it the Experience Institute. I even got to meet Oprah. Now, this is pretty traditional. Me trying to explain some sort of audacious idea to someone who's much more successful and powerful and really probably doesn't actually care about what I'm saying. This is a good picture of that year. Now, that was one of the most transformative years of my life. I learned about my industry, the things I cared about, and about myself. An Experience Institute has been my life's work, inviting people of all ages to design their education through experience and mentorship. But I think those photos, albeit they're, they're beautiful and, and they show energy and excitement, I think they only tell one part of the story. Photos like this help give another picture. When I was in Orange County, trying to find a place to stay, not sure where I would stay and finding a couch in a garage of a friend of a friend and having to sleep there for a while. And what you don't see is the number of ants on that couch <laughs> or, or the motorcycle that would start every morning at 6.30 in the morning and that would be my alarm. Or downsizing most of my things, getting rid of them, selling them so I could afford the year and so I could stay light and carry nothing more than just a couple of bags as I traveled getting to the end of the year and realizing that writing a book, prepping for a TED Talk, and trying to start a school is really overwhelming. Now, I, ever since Leap Year, I've been exploring the risk it takes to move from comfort into, into learning and the transformative impact it has on, one, on an individual's life and career. What I never expected to find was the role that panic plays in learning. It's the space where you come face to face with your fears, and not just your fears, bloated versions of those fears, things that don't even really exist. It's a part of learning that's necessary, but it's rarely discussed. Now, for a second, let's go back to those zones. There's an influential psychologist named Lev Vygotsky who talks about the zone of proximal development. The comfort zone isn't necessarily about your resources, what you have. It's about your abilities, 
about not being challenged. You know what you know, and you're right in the middle of what you know. And doing just that, there isn't really a sense of challenge. In the learning zone, there is a challenge, but you don't have everything you need to meet that challenge. You may have pieces of it, but you need other people to help you piece those things together. And if you get that help, you'll succeed. And if you don't get that help, you'll zip right through to the panic zone. And the panic zone is where you feel alone, overwhelmed, afraid. You've lost confidence here. You, you can't learn here. You don't function well. This is the head and hands moment. And the only way to move back from panic is to have help to get into the learning zone. But normally, we just want to shut down and go all the way back to comfort. Now, learning is where our most transformative moments happen. When we meet somebody who's incredibly, incredibly helpful, or when we, we, we overcome a challenge. If I were to ask you, when you learned your most valuable lessons, you would talk about a challenge. You would talk about someone who helped you through that. But comfort isn't a bad thing. In fact, the goal of learning is to expand the comfort zone. This is where we become more confident, more comfortable as we move through life, whatever it throws at us, and not getting to the panic zone. So if that's the goal of learning, if that's what we're trying to do is figure out how we can be people who are more confident no matter what life throws at us, how do we expand the comfort zone? How do we push back the panic zone? Now, the grand paradox is that the only way to expand comfort is by leaving it. So that's what we have to figure out, designing the leaps that move us from comfort into learning and when those leaps are necessary in our lives. How do we make space for them in our education systems, in our workplaces? So I have three hunches. It starts with discovery. Now, discovery is just a matter of asking questions. The question you have as you move through the day about how to make something better, about how to increase the thing that gives you hope. What are those moments that you want to improve something, make something, or change something? Those questions begin pushing you to the edge of comfort and trying to figure out what things you might want to do next. Now, as those questions and hopes surface, the thing that happens next is you begin exploring. What is it you could do? How, how do I learn? And defining those projects. Now, for some people, school is the risk they take. They move into that setting. But for others, the question is, should I try to build something? Should I travel or do a research project? Or, or, or should I just try to work with an expert in the field? The more specific that project becomes, the more parameters, the time frames, the deliverables, the more other people can start seeing what you're doing and you can invite them into it, which leads to the second thing, that you need to bring other people, you need to invite other people into learning. It's not a solo project. There's going to be times when you don't know what to do, and you're going to need the help of others. During leap year, I found myself not only needing companies to give me a chance to work with them, to learn with them, and to create with them. I needed my community to guide me through times when I got stuck or to support me emotionally. This included everyone from my own family, my mother, to mentors and friends. This photo... The story of this photo isn't that I hit the panic zone. The story of this photo is that someone took the photo. They were in the room with me, right? They were the people who walked me back from the panic zone into the learning zone and helped me finish at the end of that year. Now, I think there's something more to community than just emotional support. I think they become our audience. They become the people who validate and celebrate the things we learn, which leads to the third hunch. How do we share the projects we go into, the things we're learning and doing? For me, during leap year, it was nothing more than a weekly blog post, a monthly newsletter, and at the end of the year, creating a book and a presentation. But for you, you don't need a big book or a stage. What you need is just regular checkpoints, places where people can see what you're working on, can give you feedback, and can celebrate when you finish. Discover, 
invite, share. So I didn't go to grad school, but I designed one of the most transformative chapters of my life. My comfort zone expanded, but maybe more importantly, I learned how to navigate between comfort into learning and to push on the edge of panic. Now, 2016 is actually another leap year. And I think in Portuguese, they call this a bissexto, right? Where there's an extra day and there's a title to the year. And we're curious, what would happen if people in 2016 decided to design a project of their own, to move between comfort into learning, to design a leap, however big or small? And if we do, whether you're in high school or college or in a workplace, whatever leap you take, what would happen to learning? What would happen to the education space when we realize we can create learning, we can design it just by taking a few leaps. So, what leap will you take?